In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this really awesome glitch text transition right inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So once you're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and you have a brand new sequence created, we first want to begin by creating two brand new titles. So we'll go up into File, New Legacy Title. We'll press OK on this window. And then inside of the Legacy Title window, we can just go ahead and create our text. So we'll just tap anywhere in this black video and we'll just type out our word. So I've just typed out word one and then I'm just going to change the font of this. I'm going to increase the weight, the size, the color. And then once you've completed all of that, you just want to go ahead and center this up by using these two center buttons. So I'll press this one to center up and then the other one to center up on the other axis. Now, once you're happy with the look of that, you want to exit the legacy title window and you want to drag the title onto video layer one. So we've got our first title on our video. Now we want to scroll over, go to file, new legacy title, we'll press OK. And now we want to create our second title. So we'll tap anywhere on this black video again. We'll go word two. We can select a font of your choice. Increase the size. Then we'll center this up and again, we'll just exit and drop that on video layer one. So we've got word one and then we've got word two. So this is where we need to begin with the glitch transition to transition from word one into word two. So we'll go into effects and we'll search for warp and in warp, you'll find warp stabilizer and wave warp. You want to drag wave warp onto our first title. Now in wave warp, as you can see, if I zoom in, that doesn't exactly look very glitchy. It looks more like a wave as the title implies. So we're going to change the wave type from sine to square. And this makes it more digital and more blocky looking. Now we'll scroll all the way to the very end of that first title by pulling on this cursor here. We'll drag that to the very end and then we'll go back on ourselves by one keyframe. So go left one keyframe and we're going to increase the wave height and we're also going to increase the wave width. So we're going to go up to around 30 on the wave height and a 100 on the wave width. Now we'll create a brand new keyframe by pressing the stopwatch on wave height and wave width. Then we'll go back on ourselves five keyframes to the left. One, two, three, four, five. We'll pull the wave height to zero and we'll pull the wave width to zero as well. Now, if we play this back frame by frame, you can see we're slowly glitching out of this word. So now that we've glitched out of the first word, we need to glitch into the second word. So essentially we need to do the same effect, but in reverse on the second word. So we'll drop wave warp onto title two. That is our second title. We'll drag the cursor to the very beginning. We'll increase the wave height and the wave width, both to about a hundred. Create a brand new keyframe on the wave height and the wave width. Then we'll go 10 keyframes to the right and pull these both down to zero. Now, as you can see, we've got the wrong type of wave warp applied. We need to change the type from sine to square. And now we get our digital look back. So if we play this back, you can see we transition out of the first word and transition into the second word. Of course, though, we're not just going to finish the effect off there. We need to add some chromatic aberration to take this to the next level. So we're going to select both of those titles. We'll right click, go to nest. And you can rename this if you like, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to leave that as it is. We'll press OK. And then you want to make two copies of that nested sequence. So hold option on your keyboard. Select the nested sequence on video layer one and we'll drag that up to video layer two and then let go of option. Now we'll select video layer two, hold option, drag two up to three, and then let go of option. So now we've got three copies of that nested sequence. From here, we want to select all of those nested sequences. We'll go into effects and we'll search for the word RGB. RGB, and when searching for that, we should find color balance RGB in the image control folder. So we'll drop that onto all three of our nested sequences. And then we'll go up to the title on video layer three. So that is the top one. And as you can see, we've got red, green, blue. We want to change green to zero. And then we want to change blue to zero. 
So as you can see, we've got red on top is 100 and that's on video layer three. That's the one on top. So we're going to go down to video layer two and we're going to change red to zero and we're going to change blue to zero. So that's the video layer in the middle and that's the color in the middle. So that's 100 on the middle track and green is the color in the middle. So following the trend, we're going to go down to video layer one. We're going to make red zero, green zero and blue is kept to 100 because it's on the bottom. Now, as you can see, that's made the text red. That's not what we want. So we're going to go to video layer three. We'll go to opacity and then we'll change the blend mode from normal to screen. And we'll do the same thing on video layer two. So we'll go opacity, blend mode, normal screen. And now we've got our white text back. So now we need to just go ahead and scroll through this and find the point where it transitions over from our first text to our second text. And that is around here. So we're going to go to the video on video layer three. We'll create a brand new keyframe on position, scale and rotation. Now we'll go to the left three keyframes, create another set of keyframes. So we'll go position, scale, rotation. Now we'll go to the right 10 keyframes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we'll create another set of keyframes. So if we zoom into this area up here, you can see we've got our first keyframe, our second keyframe and our third keyframe on position, scale and rotation. So we're going to go to our second keyframe. And first of all, we're going to increase the scale. Then we're going to move the position over a touch and we're going to add a little bit of rotation. And if we play this back, you can see we've got this basic glitch effect happening. Of course, though, if you wanted to add a bit more motion, then you can just go down to rotation and halfway between these two keyframes, you want to add rotation in the opposite direction. So at the moment, it's minus one. You want to pull that up to, let's say, plus 3.9. And that's a bit more aggressive now. But of course, we've got three different channels. That means we've got three different sets of colors we can play with. So we don't just have to do this effect on this channel on video layer three. We could go down to video layer two and we'll do another glitch on at layer two. So on the point where it transitions over to our second title, we'll go scale, position, rotation. We'll go back three keyframes, scale, position, rotation, and then we'll go to the right 10 again. And we'll create another set of keyframes. Now we'll go to that middle set. And again, we'll change the position. We'll change the scale and we'll change the rotation. And then, of course, you're welcome to make any fine tune adjustments in between all of these keyframes just to add a little bit more to the glitch effect. And if we play this back, that looks really awesome now. Of course, we do have one more channel left. We've got the channel on video layer one. So rather than going crazy on this one, I'm just going to create a brand new keyframe before the glitch effect happens. We'll scroll to the end of the glitch, which is around here. Create another keyframe on position. And then I'm just going to move the position down roughly in the middle. And if we play this back, you can see we've got this really awesome glitch transition effect happening right inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. And there you go. That is how you do the glitch transition effect right inside of Adobe Premiere Pro.